Kathleen Battle. That's my latest infatuation. And just so impressed by her excellence on stage. Um, beautiful woman. That, that helps to watch her on stage. But just excellent at what she does. And this came about, this new love for her came about because I woke up, you know, one day with a desire to listen to my classical music playlist. And I returned to it in this most recent round with the intention of learning uh, the names and the composers for each piece. And it turns out that now I have 70 that I've committed to memory. I know now um, not just the musical, the classical compositions that we all hear on radio, television, movies, um, um, Warner Brothers cartoons, but I also now know who the composer is. And often I can tell you the title. Sometimes those titles trip me up. Opus number this, waltz number that, you know. But numbers and I aren't, you know, best friends. So sometimes I get tripped up on the titles, but I can pretty much tell you all the titles, certainly the composers. I added a few new ones this week. Samuel Barber and his Adagio for Strings, for instance. I added that. Leo Arnault and his Bugler's theme, which we know as the, uh, the introductory theme for the Olympics games, you know. So uh, some wonderful things I've added, uh, just, just wonderful pieces. So I love the playlist. Suddenly I am in love with classical music from Mozart to Karl Orff. <laughs> You know, and anybody in between, Handel and Haydn, you know, and um, just, it's just wonderful, wonderful. I think it's sad that now people are attacking Western culture, and not now, it's been going on for a long, long time, but now it is so very evident. People are very open about being anti-Western, and what they are actually doing in discrediting um, the the... Johann Strauss, for instance, and um, Mozart, Bach, uh, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Lord bless him. Um, what they're doing is, is just trying to erase some of the most beautiful treasures the world has received from the minds of creative people. And we cannot let hatred for what a small group of people did influence our or taint our view of, of all of the people who might look like them. You know, the same can be done and said about the uh, African descendants in this country who go about killing one another, slaughtering one another. They're just doing a Hutu uh, against the Tutsi of Rwanda in slow motion. If you kill about 7,000 of your own a year, it's not very long before you get to one million almost one million having been killed by their own so-called brothers. So African descendants today are doing a lot of things that are un um, unsavory, not palatable, not healthy for a culture. Uh, going about singing, or, or I should say shouting rap songs where women are called the B words, uh, the N word is, is used you know, copiously. Um, walking around with your underwear showing, the imprint of your buttocks or genitalia exposed to the world. Uh, some of the women dressing as strippers and whores only would dress in the past. And now we're dressing that way and calling it dress up. No, that's not dress up. Look at black people in the past and you'll see how African descendants once dressed. And when I say black people, I'm making a distinction between black and the capital N's. Capital N's call themselves by that word, and they don't see anything wrong with it. And, you know, they're calling them what themselves what they are. I argued that there is uh, two, tr two groups of tribes, basically, in the African America uh, that we know today. Uh, the one tribes, the one group of tribes are the blacks, the other group of tribes are the N-words, and, and that is why, you know, that you don't, if you're black, you don't identify with them. They don't represent you. And right now, they are the ones clamoring to be called black, 
They are the ones misbehaving on a daily basis, killing one another, killing black people, killing other people, these of the capital N tribes. And they are the ones who are saying, oh, black lives don't matter to you. Well, that's not true. Black lives do matter to black people and to other people. What you're really saying is that capital N lives should matter to other people more than capital N lives matter to capital N's. That's what they're really saying. And so the devil has taken what used to be the unsavory underbelly of our culture, of the culture of the African Americans, and has taken that underbelly and elevated it to a status of idolatry that other people are supposed to defer to it, to even worship it in the name of color. It's absurd. Uh, there are beautiful things that come out of uh, black culture. One could argue that there are even some beautiful things that come out of N-word culture. But much of what comes out of N-word culture is contaminating, damaging, and should not be extolled, should not be held up um, as, as something to imitate and something to um, idolize. But anyway, back to what I was saying. I don't know how I went on that tangent. Um, Yesterday I watched Kathleen Battle and Jesse Norman perform Negro Spirituals at the Carnegie Hall, at Carnegie Hall, in a video that was just mind blowing, in a performance that was just mind blowing. They did well, and the uh, a chorus behind them, the opera of the sorry, the orchestra that accompanied them, just incredible. And I don't even like opera, but these two women, fantastic what they did. It changed me. And I was very proud of the fact that Jesse Norman is from Augusta. And I always knew that. You know, we always grew up knowing that. What I didn't know until yesterday is the academic path she took. She attended C.T. Walker, which is Charles T. Walker Elementary. She, A.R. Johnson Junior High, as I did, and Lucy Craft Laney High School, which is where I was supposed to go. But I remained at A.R. Johnson Junior High when they changed it into A.R. Johnson Health Professions Magnet High School. And as a student at A.R. Johnson Magnet, we uh, shared the bus with the young kids from C.T. Walker Elementary, which had itself been turned into a magnet school. And I would have gone to the school that she attended, Laney, had I not remained at Johnson. So just to have traveled a similar path uh, or traveled so closely the academic path that she did it really made me feel good about Norman, made me feel good about um, Walker, Johnson, and, and Laney, how that trio of, of education can yield someone so powerful in the world, uh, so influential, because Jesse Norman really was just powerful. Her stage presence was uh, queenly um, and when she performed with Kathleen Battle at first it looked like a great queen was singing with an astounding princess but by the time the thing was over with you realized no these are two queens <laughs> different styles different kingdoms but harmonious and complementary and it was just one of the, the best things I've ever seen so if you get a chance look that up Jesse Norman Kathleen Battle and uh, that was anything but a battle. That was um, a ballet of voices that occurred between those two great women. <laughs> 